Do you know what Amazon Elastic Block Storage is or EBS? What if you had a storage that could be expanded or shrunk according to your needs and you could also plug in the storage to multiple devices? Well, this is exactly what EBS is. It is like a virtual hard drive in the cloud that provides storage that you can scale and tailor according to your requirements. Hence, you can keep on adding data without the fear of ever running out of storage. But before we get any further into this video, make sure to subscribe to IntelliPaths' YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss out any updates from us. Also, if you want to know more about AWS from industry experts, make sure to check out IntelliPaths' AWS Solution Architects course from the link in the description down below. This is going to be our agenda for the day. So, let's dive right in with our first topic, what is EBS? Well, let's break it down with the library illustration for better understanding. Imagine you had a library filled with hundreds of books. Our library needs shelves to store our books. According to our requirements, we can either increase or decrease the number of bookshelves to accommodate our books. This is exactly how EBS works. We can increase or decrease the storage capacity according to the data we have. Similar to our library, EBS also keeps our data safe and accessible even if the virtual computer it's attached to is turned off. Just like books, our closed library remains safe. Coming to technical term, EBS is a cloud-based, persistent and scalable storage service provided by AWS for use with the EC2 instance. For a deeper understanding, I would like to give you a quick inlet into what actually is an EC2 instance. An EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud is a virtual server provided by AWS. These instances provide scalable cloud computing resources which can be customized according to our needs. And what exactly are computing resources? Basically, these resources are nothing but CPU, memory, storage and networking capabilities that are provided by a particular EC2 instance. Now, what happens if we accidentally lose all this precious data from our EBS volume or we accidentally delete an EBS volume? Well, for this, AWS provides us with snapshots. A snapshot is a point-in-time copy of an EBS block. It is used to back up the data inside EBS. These can be used to restore the lost EBS volumes as data. The data stored inside snapshots are incremental. Now, what does incremental mean? Let's take another example. Say, in the first snapshot, I am saving 10 GB of data. After making a few changes to my data, an additional 2 GB is added into my existing data. Now I create another snapshot to store the changes. Traditionally, this new snapshot must contain 12 GB of data considering the previous 10 plus the new 2 GB resulting in an additional 22 GB of total data. But due to the incremental nature of EBS snapshots, only the additional 2 GB of data will be stored inside the new snapshot instead of the whole 12 GB of data, saving us almost 10 GB of data. So that is the whole purpose why the snapshot feature is existential for. I hope this illustration helps you understand the EBS snapshots. Now moving ahead, let me take you into further discussion about EBS volume types. But before we understand volume types, I need you to understand the concept of IOPS and throughput. IOPS or input output per second refers to the read-write operations a storage device can perform per second. Think of IOPS as how quickly a storage device can start or complete individual tasks like fetching or writing small bits of data. It measures the speed of individual operations or transactions. For example, say we go to any online store and we want to browse the latest collection of tops available. So now the system needs to read and display the data from the servers in the minimum amount of time possible. High IOPS ensures these queries are processed quickly, providing faster response time to the user. Throughput, on the other hand, measures how much data can be transferred through a system at a given time. It tells you how fast a storage device can move large amounts of data continuously. Say, we go to another website where we have to view images, stream videos or download some content. Then the server needs to transfer large files in the minimum amount of time possible. High throughput ensures these files are delivered quickly, improving overall user experience. Let's come back to our EBS volume types. 
EBS offers various SSD, solid state drive and HDD hard disk drive services. Let's look at the various types of services offered by EBS. Starting with general purpose SSD, GP3 and GP2. As the name suggests, these are like the all-round option. They offer a good balance of speed and cost for most types of applications. You can use them for things like running websites, applications and databases that need a decent performance. Now, GP3, the newer version, more customizable in terms of how much speed IOPS you need versus how much space storage you require. Then GP2, which is good for a general use, provides bursts of speed when needed, suitable for a wide range of workloads. Second one, provisioned IOPS, SSD, IO2 and IO1. When you absolutely need fast and consistent performance, especially for databases that handle lots of transactions or critical applications that cannot afford slowdowns. IO2, the latest and most reliable option, provides very high performance with high durability and low latency, best for mission critical applications. IO1, similar to IO2 but slightly older, still great for applications needing predictable performance with specified IOPS. Third one is the throughput optimized HDD, SD1. If you want to work with big data or need to process large amounts of data quickly and cost effectively, it's ideal for scenarios where speed and throughput, how fast data moves, matter more than instant access to small bits of data. Last but not the least, cold HDD, SC1. When you want to store a lot of data but don't need to access it very often, it's like storing stuff in a warehouse rather than keeping it in your office. It's cheaper but slower to access. Great for backup archival data like all old records you legally need to keep but rarely access or any data that's cold, meaning not frequently used. Now let's move on to the most important part. Why do we need EBS? Think about it. Why do we really need EBS? We could have just saved our data inside our EC2 instance itself. To understand this, let me take another example. Say you have a laptop which you use for your work. The laptop has built-in storage where you can save your files. Now let's say you work on important files that you need to access from multiple locations from multiple devices and you want to ensure these files are always safe even if your laptop gets damaged or lost. To solve this problem, you use an external hard drive, say a pen drive in this case. This pen drive is portable so you can connect it to any computer you use. It also keeps your data safe and secure, ensuring that your important files are not lost even if the device itself has issues. This is how EBS works as well. Although we can store the data inside the EC2, to store the data permanently, we need EBS. Remember, EBS stores data locally, which means the data blocks can only be accessed within specified availability zone. Hence, your EBS block cannot be accessed globally. Now, let's get into the implementation part. We are going to create our own EBS volume and attach it to an already existing EC2 server. Now, to create your own EBS volume, you need to log into your AWS account. From there, go to the search button and search for EC2. And there you can see the EC2, the first link, click on it. And then you'll be redirected to your EC2 management console. From there, on your left side, if you scroll down, under the Elastic Block Store, you'll see Volumes. Click on that and it'll take you to the Volume section. Now in the top right corner, you can see Create Volume. Click on that and here comes the volume types, the ones that I explained to you. So now we're going to be creating a very minimal website. So for that, let's just go with General Purpose SSD or the GP3 option. You can keep any size you want to. I'll be keep keeping 10. And then make sure your EC2 instance is the same one, is in the same availability zone as your EBS volume. And that's it. You can click on Create Volume. Now if you refresh this page, Done. you can see that this is the volume that we just created. Now, if you go right here, you can see that it's available, but it's not in use yet. That's because we haven't attached it to our EC2 instance yet. That's what I talked about the availability zones. So for attaching this volume to your EC2 instance, they should be in the same availability zone. So now click on actions and click on attach volume. Now it will take you to this page and here you can select your instances. Now there are two instances which are created in the same availability zone. You can select any one of your instance, select any device name and attach the volume 
and if you see here it's in use it's attached to our ac2 volume that's it so now if you want to see where your volume is created you can go to instances and select the particular instance to which you attached your ebs volume click on connect select the rdp client now you can just open your rdp connect to it Now if you want to see your EBS volume, you have to go to this create and format hard disk partitions. Now here if you scroll down a bit, you can see this which is online and unallocated. Click on it, new simple volume. Now if you go to your PC, this PC and now you can see a new volume D of size. This is the volume that we created. So that's how you create your own EBS volume. This is it. Now you know what an EBS volume is and have also created your own EBS volume. Once again, if you want more content like this, hit the bell icon and the subscribe button to never miss an update from the IntelliPath team. Thank you very much.